which has beset the inhabitants of the world. They want to pass through the window into the house. The inhabitants of the world have forgotten, only primary schools were found at first. If you passed the standard six examinations, you were qualified to do any type of work in the world. In the course of time, if you passed the Junior Cambridge class fourth, you were qualified to do any type of work anywhere in the world. Later, if you passed the Cambridge examination, then you had to select the work you wished to do. If you passed the matriculation examination, then you would be regarded as a white man, as the chief executive of any establishment. What is the situation today in the world? If you do not have a PhD, you will not be recognized as a professor. Baptism of circumcision and Abraham. So it is with God. The first covenant of God enacted with man was baptism by circumcision. That was the covenant God entered into with Abraham. See Genesis chapter 17 verse 10. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep, between me and you and my seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. Genesis chapter 17 verse 10. Now that a great many people say, they ought not to be baptized twice, do they not know, that circumcision is baptism? Circumcision is baptism, a covenant entered into a with Abraham by God. God instructed, all male children born should be circumcised. That is why there is none uncircumcised among the Israelites. The Gentiles are those who are uncircumcised and are not regarded as children of God. At the time of Abraham, if you were not circumcised, you were regarded as a pagan. That is why when Jacob on his return journey home, they sojourned to the city of the kin of the prince, the prince who had defiled and impregnated his daughter, and the kin of that city pleaded with Jacob, and said, he was prepared to accept any condition Jacob demanded. Jacob did not want any other thing, except, the man should be circumcised. All that Jacob demanded was, the kin and his household be baptized. The kin then asked, whether that was all of the condition, Jacob affirmed. The theme of the sermon then was that they be circumcised. Any person who was circumcised was in other words baptized. Now that people say, baptism is never administered twice, I have to tell you, you can even be baptized, as many times as possible. At that time people knew not what was sinful. They did not know what was fornication. They knew nothing about confession of sins. The covenant God entered into a with Abraham was that every male child should be circumcised. Baptism of purification and sanctification, and Moses. During the time of Moses another covenant was entered into a with the people by God. God enacted that all male children born of a woman must be surrendered to God. The child would be taken before the altar for sanctification. See Exodus chapter 13 verse 2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. Exodus chapter 13 verse 2. At the time of Abraham, any child born was circumcised after eight days. At the time of Moses, the child was to be taken to the altar for sanctification, after eight days. That sanctification is the child blessing which we conduct today. Both were forms of baptism. After circumcision one had to be taken to the altar for sanctification. In accordance with Mosaic law to turtle doves or to pigeons were offered as a sacrifice. That is what was preached about. A child had to be taken to the altar for sanctification. When you argue, baptism should not be administered twice, what about the two forms of baptism, which our Lord Jesus Christ underwent? People argue, if a man is baptized twice he will die. But all of you have been circumcised, taken to the altar for blessing, and baptized in water, have you died? When the priesthood is changed, the law must of a necessity be changed. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12. Baptism of repentance and John. Baptism by sanctification was preached everywhere until there came John the Baptist. John was the first person to whom God revealed the baptism by immersion. Matthew chapter 3 verse 6. The baptism of John was by immersion. It does not imply, the baptism in the time of Abraham was not good. It does not also imply, the baptism at the time of Moses was not good. But the baptism of John is that of water and spirit, for he was the foreigner of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verse 3. Since God sent John specifically for baptism of repentance, it is therefore a significant baptism. You have to hammer an iron while it is hot. 
When it is cold, it is not easily malleable. For God had said that Elijah shall come before the Messiah, in order to make straight the path. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, Luke chapter 7 verse 27. The path referred to is not a road but the heart. Right from the beginning of the world, no one has become truly repentant and no one has known what is sinful. Abraham did not know what was sinful. Jacob knew not. When God sends you he will follow behind you. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said, Among them that are born of women there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew chapter 11 verse 11, Luke chapter 7 verse 28. Our Lord Jesus Christ remained on earth thirty years but no one knew him because of the sin which abounds on earth. For it is said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. How can you see God, when your heart is not pure? It is quite impossible, for you to see God, if you are not pure in heart. That is, why it is said, except you are born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verses 3 and 5. If you do not forsake sins, confess and repent of your sins, and then be baptized, how can you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? Only the pure in heart can see God. It is said, follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Every count must start from zero. If you do not see a thing, how can you receive salvation? Right now, you are unable to see our Lord Jesus Christ, because you have not forsaken sins, neither have you repented of your sins. If you live for a million years, as long as you do not forsake sins and repent of them, you cannot see him and then believe in him. Peter and some of the disciples were formerly disciples of John. They were baptized for repentance in order to make straight their path. They all confessed their sins and then were baptized. They forsook their sins and that is why they saw our Lord Jesus Christ. John no more had disciples, because his disciples repented of their sins, confessed them and became baptized and so believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. Realized they had already been circumcised. They had also been taken before the altar for sanctification. Thirdly, they also received the baptism of John. That is, why they believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, let our first lesson be read. First Bible lesson, John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except you are reborn you cannot see Christ. That is to show you how the world is in a pitiful situation. Do you know Nicodemus was a learned lawyer? He had all the laws about him but did he understand the words of our Lord Jesus Christ? When he went to our Lord Jesus Christ by night, our Lord Jesus Christ told him, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so Nicodemus asked, How can a man be born again, when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? If he had started from zero would he not have understood the words of our Lord Jesus Christ? But since he had started by cutting down the overgrowth upon the undergrowth he could not understand the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why everything in brotherhood begins from zero. When you are told to pay tithe or do any other thing, it is all secondary. The primary thing is, for you to repent and confess your sins and become baptized. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Repent and be saved. How can you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, when you have not yet repented of your own sins? When you tell a person, our Lord Jesus Christ has come, how can the person see him, when he has not repented of his sins? When he has not made straight his path, and then have a pure heart, you are only causing confusion by your preaching. The first thing is, for you to tell someone to repent of his sins, to forsake fornication, lies, anger, stealing, hatred, indulgence in the preparation of concoction and charms, sorcery, adultery, and confess his sins and be baptized. When that is done, the person will be able to see our Lord Jesus Christ. It is said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it is asked, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach, except they be sent? 
Romans chapter 10 verses 13 to 15.